Hey CST family, welcome to CST at Home. We've got a lot planned for you this week, from Christian education, to cabin time, to challenges, to cooking and dancing, and we'll end each night with evening prayers on Zoom. It's camp for the whole family, your siblings, your parents, even your auntie and your uncle. This week, camp is coming home for the whole family. Our theme this year was going to be, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And this is just so powerful. There's this radical change from one extreme to the other. I shall not die, but live and living declare the works of the Lord. It's like a complete transformation, a complete reframing from death to life. This powerful affirmation and proclamation that Christ is life and nothing separates us from that life. Oftentimes, it's when we feel like we're dying that we really begin to live. And we see this at camp. Just think about it. You get up early. You do chores. You don't get many options for afternoon program. You're told what to do for evening program. You can't eat what you want and you can't eat when you want. This might seem like the death of summer vacation. But we know it's what makes us feel alive. It's what makes us feel the most alive. We know hard things won't kill us. They bring us to Christ. They bring us to life. His strength is made perfect in weakness. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And we begin to become aware of this at camp, but this is what the church teaches us throughout the year. In fact, every divine liturgy, this radical reframing is heard. In the anaphora, we hear, Who has so loved thy world as to give thine only begotten Son, that all who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life? Who, when he had come and had fulfilled all the dispensation for us, and the night in which you has betrayed, or rather gave himself up for the life of the world. There's this or rather, it just comes in so strong. It's like, wait, wait, wait. You think Christ was betrayed and had no control and no power and was deceived? No, this was God acting. This was God offering himself up for the life of the world. This was God revealing that he is the selfless lover of mankind. His crucifixion is his enthronement as a king. It shows us what divinity is all about. Mercy and offering and unity and selfless love. This was not God being played. This is God who saves. There is this radical reframing that happens here. Just like I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. And there's another place this happens too. During Orthros, when we chant, Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. When we chant this hymn, we hear, Wherefore, O women disciples, do ye mingle sweet-smelling spices with your tears of pity. The radiant angel within the sepulcher cried unto the myrrh-bearing women, Behold the grave and understand, for the Savior is risen from the tomb. It's like, hey, understand, he's not dead. Christ is risen, love reigns, mercy conquers, sacrifice leads to salvation. Everything you previously thought on your way here has changed. Your whole worldview is different now. There's this radical reframing, behold the grave and understand, the Savior is risen. The whole world is draped in immortality. We also hear in this hymn, Very early in the morning did the myrrh-bearing women run lamenting unto thy tomb. But an angel came toward them, saying, The time for lamentation is past. Weep not, but announce unto the apostles the resurrection. Again, it's like, stop, stop, stop. Weep not, but announce the resurrection. And then the last hymn we'll talk about today, we hear the myrrh-bearing women mourned as bearing spices. They mourned as they drew near thy tomb, O Savior. But the angel spake unto them, saying, Why number ye the living among the dead? In that he is God, he is risen from the grave. It's like you are completely off. You're completely off. You seek the living among the dead. He is God. He is risen. Completely change your mindset. It's all different now. You've been thinking wrong. And so it is with this same radical reframing that we look at, at not being able to have camp. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Not having camp won't kill us. In fact, it might even bring us to life. And we hope here at CST that this week is a time for families to come together and share in discussions and challenges and meals and games and, and even some dancing. Family is so important in our faith. Our understanding of who we are in relation to God is very much shaped by how we view and experience family life. It's in the family where we learn and live out the divine ways of God, the selfless offering and patience and unity and peace. From sharing toys to sharing the TV to cooking, 
for one another. It's all there. The family and the home is the place where we learn and live the ways of the kingdom. Our homes are places of salvation. That's the function of a home. It's a place where we meet God and live with him and work out our salvation. This is what makes our house a home. This is the most important truth about our house. One that's not mentioned in Fixer Upper or House Hunters or the best beach houses in America. When it comes down to it, our houses are places of salvation where we meet God and learn to live like him in humility and offering and thanksgiving and praise with our whole family. Our homes are dwellings, our dwellings to prepare us for our eternal dwellings. There are little kingdoms to prepare us for the heavenly kingdom. St. John Chrysostom says, The house in which Christians live is the abode, where the members of the family will spend the majority of their lives. It's here, not in the society nor at the marketplace, where individuals will learn of the important things of the Christian life. It's in the Christian home that individuals will be able to work out their eternal salvation. It's in the Christian home that children will be raised and taught by word and action what it means to be a Christian. It's in the Christian home that all of the teachings of Christ and of the church can be practiced. The Christian home can and should provide all these things because each home in which an Orthodox Christian family resides should be considered a family church. Yet how often we fall short of this. And it's in this light that we can say, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And may this CST at home experience remind us of the beauty of family. That it's a reflection of the unity and selfless love and peace of God, a glimpse into his beauty and the place where we are formed for the kingdom. May we always see family in our homes in this light. We're one. We're one family, one body of Christ, children of God and heirs of the kingdom. May God continue to bless and guide you and your families as he continues to mold you into citizens of the kingdom.